Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to VG Myths, the online internet video game TV show with an insatiable appetite. Kirby Superstar is the definitive Kirby, jam-packed with half a dozen separate games and a smorgasbord of unique copy abilities to help you beat them. To play Superstar to its fullest, you'll need to learn the ins and outs of every ability's moveset, but as has been thoroughly established, I lack any ability whatsoever. Can you beat Kirby Superstar's minimum Y challenges? Hey folks, Wario Fan here. It's only the intro, and I'm sure some of you are already itching to tell Game Champ to do the DS remake down in the comments. Well, I'm here to tell you that I've already got that covered. I'm making my own video on Kirby Superstar Ultra over on my channel at WarioFan63. It should be done at about, uh, let's see, oh, as soon as you're finished watching Game Champs run. So stop on by later for a double dose of Kirby. With that advertisement out of the way, the rules are simple. We're trying to beat all six of Kirby Superstar's campaigns while pressing the Y button as few times as possible. As base Kirby, the Y button is how you suck up enemies, and with a copy ability, it's how you use that ability's attacks. Without it, we lose almost all direct attacking capability, which is a bit of a handicap considering how combat-focused this game can get. Similar to the Splatoon runs, this will be a segmented best score challenge, counting the number of Y presses in each of Superstar's campaigns separately. A campaign attempt begins when you select New Game and ends when that campaign is beaten. With the rules set, let's get the first run started. Can you beat Spring Breeze without the Y button? Our best method of attack against standard enemies is Kirby Slide, performed with the jump button while crouching. For the most part, though, ignoring enemies will get you where you want to go just fine. On the second screen is a mini-boss fight against Poppy Brother Sr. The slide doesn't deal damage to bosses, so we'll have to rely on two alternatives. First, Kirby has a guard move that is theoretically meant for guarding, but can also be used offensively. If you touch an enemy while guarding, they'll take an extremely small amount of chip damage, and Kirby will take none. This is obviously going to take a while on its own, but against Poppy Brothers Sr. in particular, there's something else we can use. Enemy bomb explosions are friendly fire capable. Guard right in front of Poppy's face when he does a quick horizontal throw, and he'll be within explosion range and take a huge chunk of damage. With that and the next couple screens being easy clears, we move into the boss of Stage 1, Wispy Woods. Bad news, guard strats are completely non-viable. Wispy simply acts as a wall when you walk in, into him, and he doesn't drop any bombs either, meaning we have no method of attack. Mission failed! We'll have to use the Y button to proceed, and of course, since this is a minimalist run, we'll be trying to get as much mileage out of a single press as possible. Reboot the game, and after beating Poppy Brother Sr., use one Y press to suck him up and obtain the bomb ability. We can't do anything with the bomb ability on our own, but run back to Wispy Woods and press the totally allowed A button to summon an AI-controlled Poppy Brothers Jr. helper. As you might be able to guess, helpers are fully capable of doing whatever the heck they want. Normally, what they want to do is die a painful death, but Wispy Woods uses the same strategy, and he just so happens to be slightly better at it than your helper, progressing you to stage two. Very fortunately, both you and your helper will recover to full HP between stages, allowing you to blaze through stage two until it's boss fight against Lolo and Lala. Unfortunately, Poppy Brothers will once again attempt to die a painful death, and he excels at this strategy in tight corridors. You know what's coming. Before he gets the chance, pull out a second controller and start dual wielding. Now that we're controlling Poppy Brothers, he can no longer throw bombs for obvious reasons, but guard strats are still viable. Keep both characters at the center of the arena. When Lolo and Lala spawn, pause the game to get your bearings and move your hands between controllers as necessary. If a block is being pushed in the center lane, guard with both characters to deal free chip damage. If they're on the top and bottom lanes, move one character up to the top lane to intercept with a guard. Note that you're capable of taking damage if pushed off the ledge since you can't guard in midair, so give yourself room on the far side. Also, Gordo will break your guard, so if one of them shows up, make sure neither character is in its lane. With patience, both Lolo and Lala will headbutt you until they die, letting you move on to Stage 3. 
I've got some bad news though. Once a helper is player controlled, they'll stay that way permanently. We can only get another computer controlled helper after the player controlled helper dies. I recommend holding the guard button on controller 2 while you run through the stage's Kirby, minimizing the damage they take. In this stage is a mid boss fight against Krako. During this battle, I actually accidentally let my helper lose all its health, but that's not an automatic death. Upon reaching 0 HP, the helper will begin exploding. If they touch a copyable enemy in this state, they'll be revived to full HP with that enemy's ability. Be warned that this only works if the enemy provides a different ability than your current, so in a fight with only one type of ability, you only get one revive. After a little experimentation, I realized you can mostly safely defeat Krakow here by hugging the left edge of the screen. The only attacks that can chip through a guard there are the lasers from approaching Waddle Doos. It's not much, but will build up over time, so take out those Waddle Doos when you get a safe opportunity. As long as you don't get too unlucky, after about 8 minutes, Krakow will finally run out of health and let you move on. This next room, unfortunately, is a big, literal roadblock. A path through these star blocks must be carved to proceed, and the lowest of those star blocks is one space off the ground. That means we can't slide through, nor can we break the blocks with air gusts. And if you're thinking we should just puff out in midair, try to remember which button does that. We do have one other move we can use, though. Send your helper down to do what they do best, die a painful death. Upon reaching 0 HP, the helper will unleash a damaging explosion, which is fully capable of destroying nearby blocks. With a space in the wall opened, you can carve the path with no Y presses required. As great as it is to progress, we're now back to absolute basics. For the true boss fight against Krakow, guard strats are our only option. Luckily, Krakow's moveset is a completely predictable three-step pattern. First, he'll drop a Waddle Doo to the left or right, depending on Kirby's direction. Second, he'll perform an attack. Third, he'll travel to the opposite side of the screen, then repeat the pattern. Bait him into dropping the Waddle Doo to the edge of the screen so you don't have to deal with it, then run to the opposite side. Krakow's circling lasers will chip you while guarding, but all other attacks are guard safe. When Krakow is about to move, guard just to the side of him. He has several movement variations, but if he uses one that scrapes the ground, you'll deal some chip damage. Follow this pattern religiously for about 10 minutes until Krakow scrapes past you just one too many times, letting you move on to Stage 4. Stage 4 is dedicated entirely to the final boss fight against King DDD. Being the final boss, he's a formidable opponent, much less predictable and far more dangerous than any we've seen before. His hammer attacks can deal chip damage even while guarding, and his suck attack will break you out of your guard entirely. Guarding his tackles will safely deal damage, but the fight will take forever if you rely on those alone. Instead, go for an offensive defense, running into DDD and guarding slightly before reaching him, connecting with your momentum. Be extremely careful while doing this. DDD's dash attack has absolutely no windup. If you're within range when he decides to dash, he'll do it instantly. This lack of a tell also happens to differentiate the dash attack from the suck attack. The suck attack will have DDD back up a couple steps before running forward. Once DDD is low on health, he'll become more aggressive, giving you less time between his attacks. If he's almost dead, and you're almost dead, I recommend playing it extra safe and halting the aggressive guards, always letting him come to you. After a grueling 20 minute battle, DDD will finally bounce off Kirby into the stratosphere, thus ending the Spring Breeze Minimum Y Challenge with a score of 1 Y Press. Special thanks to some Patreon backers, including Anon42, Les Lamek, Rira, Lively Leader, Alex Nelson, Jay Snell just is out $10 just because he likes it when Miss Champ reads his name, Random Goy, never mind, I can't come up with something better, Game Champ says trans rights are human rights, Crustacean Creep, Evil Game Champ is like Bad Evening Nobody, and Unwelcome Forward to WH Facts, the offline on paper board game movie, Nathaniel Kalita, Jorb, Ripface says you think changing the vocal tier can stop my love and support, uh, Arkham, slowest game of chess, Black, Waiting on White, now I only want to triumph, Ivy Mackey, 8 Bit Mistrebus, Eve Cable, and attempted wholesomeness. Now it's time for game two out of six. Can you beat Dynablade without the Y button? Nope, mission failed. The third screen of the game is explicitly impossible with base Kirby, once again featuring a breakable block and a wall one space above ground level. That's why we use one Y press to grab an ability. 
Summon a helper, use controller 2 to position them by the block, and mash the A button. Normally the A button teleports player 2 to Kirby, but if you mash it, it doubles as a self-destruct button, destroying the block. Run player 2 down to the waddle do below to revive them and move on without any real sacrifice. Soon after will be a side path to a sword ability pedestal, giving Kirby an ability as well absolutely free. The rest of the stage is incredibly easy, even the mini-boss fight against Chef Kawasaki. If an exploding helper touches him, they'll be revived with a random ability, and thus can chain self-destructs on him until his health bar runs down. Stage 2 features absolutely no roadblocks whatsoever, which is awesome because it also happens to have an easily accessible wheel pedestal. Give wheel to both Kirby and your AI-controlled helper, then jump on for a ride. As long as Wheelie is AI-controlled, Player 1's movement takes priority here, allowing you to escort your partner without them losing much health. Jump off and let them run over bonkers to complete the stage. That won't be our last visit to Stage 2, though. If ever you're lacking an ability or helper, run through Stage 2 real quick to stock up on Wheel, then exit to the map screen, which very thankfully uses the X button. Stage 3 opens with yet another mid-air breakable block, which can once again be destroyed with helper self-destruct strats. Take the opportunity to resurrect them as a Plasma Wisp. Plasma is a special ability that builds up static whenever a direction on the D-pad is pressed, eventually creating an electric shield. This shield can deal damage to nearby enemies, giving a larger range than guard strats and about sextuple more damage. Plus, since wisps can freely fly around the screen, dual-wielding controllers is easier than usual, letting us shock Fred to death with minimal effort. Next, Stage 4. One important note, don't enter waterfalls while puffed up. Turns out, air floats. Otherwise, it's another easy clear. Along the way, be sure to enter the secret switch room. In addition to pressing the switch, you'll find a copy pedestal, which you'll want for the upcoming trio of mini-boss fights. With a backup ability stocked on Kirby and your helper reviving themselves on each boss, they can crush them all for you. Stage 5 is dedicated entirely to the boss fight against Dynablade, but before heading up there, head into the secret area unlocked by the Switch, containing a bunch of free ability pedestals. I personally prefer Parasol on Kirby and Yo-Yo for your helper. Jim will deal most damage to Dynablade, then you can take over with Parasol. Parasol has a special property. The Umbrella functions as a passive damaging hitbox. Jump slightly in front of Dynablade while facing in the opposite direction to finish her off, thus completely the Dynablade Minimum Y Challenge in one Y Press. Special thanks to some Patreon backers, including a shape shifting mass of cinders and ash. Duna Nix, Dynamaton, roll them off. Well, at least my best friend isn't an uncuddleable. Getsugaru, Love Story Gaming, TTV, Mr. One Up Machine. Lex spent $10, so Miss Champ would say Betty Botta bought some butter, but said she this butter's bitter if I put it in. Celica, Stan's plaid jacket, Eric Williams, Ray Danger, and Kelzini. Now that the baby easy chump games are over, it's time for game number three. 3 out of 6, the main event. Can you beat Gourmet Race without the Y button? Yes, special thanks to Patreon backer Biohazard. Now that the double baby easy jump game is over, it's time for triple baby easy jump game number 4 out of 6. Can you beat the Great Cave Offensive without the Y button? The Great Cave Offensive is an exploration-focused collectathon where every collectible is completely optional, and you'd have to actively go out of your way to obtain them. Naturally, we'll be running straight past all these platforming challenges and puzzles, cutting out almost all content save for the boss fights. First boss, Fatty Whale. My strategy is incredibly difficult to pull off, but if you put in the practice, you should be able to succeed roughly 20% of the time. First, press and hold the guard button. After about 10 minutes, Fatty Whale's health bar will reach zero. Take another leisurely stroll through the maze of stage two to reach the second boss, Windows. I personally went in with dual mirror abilities. Both mirror's attacks and its guard are capable of reflecting projectiles, meaning your helper will get hit by attacks much more rarely, surviving the entire battle without issue. Next up is the third stage, the castle. If you enter, you'll fight the third boss, Camellio Arm. So don't. Turns out there's a special speedrun trick. You can just kind of leave. Finally, we meet the fourth and final boss, Wham Bam Rock. Helpers almost never deal real damage here before exploding, so we'll be fighting solo. 
However, luckily, there's a parasol pedestal in the room immediately prior, which will conveniently hit each falling hand as you walk out of its way. Just focus on dodging attacks until Wham Bam Rock defeats itself. There is one final asterisk before technically beating the game. Kirby can't bonk the final destructible bomb block while puffed up, but a helper with infinite mid-air jumps is fully capable. With Kirby finally poorer than his wildest dreams, the Great Cave Offensive No Why Challenge is mission complete. Special thanks to some Patreon backers, including Hey, is anyone missing an underscore? I found one under the rug. Rekindle with the power of RNG. Fluff System, Chris Kuslin, Charles Surrett, Rass Barrel. Sophia has transfer gender. Kirito9979. Cody Merchant, Seltzer Fountain Man, Madison, Aussie Aussie Aussie, Oi Oi Oi. Touchtone Banana Phone, Melody Bunna. Kaiser says sometimes a bit of solitude is needed to figure out where to go next in your life. Everyone's favorite. Trans Dragon Girl and Clan Ghost Bear Mech Warrior Aurelia, Moomin Biscuit, Trans Rights Are Human Rights, STL of the Wild, and Ken of Red Lions. Gosh, Gamer Champ! You yell into the comment section. This challenge run has been incredibly easy. Isn't the entire conceit of this channel your descent into hell? Good news! We've officially arrived! Welcome to Game 5 of 6 Can You Beat Revenge of Meta Knight Without the Y Button? Revenge of Meta Knight is a totally linear campaign that allows for almost zero backtracking. That means that at any moment, if you make a mistake, or even more frustratingly, the helper AI succeeds in its ultimate goal of dying a painful death, you could potentially forfeit the entire run and be forced to start over from the beginning. You'll need absolutely flawless babysitting strats to make it to the end. The first point of note in Stage 1 is the mid-boss fight against Iron Man. You've probably noticed that timer at the bottom of the screen. It's not too big a deal while platforming, but we definitely don't have enough time for boss fight guard strats. At least, not normal guard strats. By sheer random happenstance, Iron Man's attack pattern is perfect for a quick and cheesy clear. Guard at the side of the screen and Iron Man will soon walk over and try to bash you, thus infinite comboing herself. And while her attacks normally chip past your guard, this strat sidesteps that issue since Iron Man's hands extend just far enough to whiff behind you. The next screen unfortunately has a more definitive roadblock three underwater star blocks. Since there are no ability pedestals beforehand, our only option is base Kirby, who simply doesn't have any underwater block breaking tools. Thus, we're forced to mission fail with one Y press. Walk along the next couple easy screens and you'll reach the boss prep room containing three ability pedestals. If you die to a boss, you'll respawn in the prep room, so there's no pressure. With Parasol on Kirby and Poppy Brothers Jr. as your helper, you can defeat Wispy Woods and double wispy woods with the age-old strategy of sipping a latte. Don't worry if your poppy bro dies. A few screens into level 2 will be given two ability pedestals before a mini-boss fight. Between the two, I recommend Sir Kibble, who's more than efficient enough a boss killer. Right after are a sequence of bomb blocks which must be destroyed to continue, including this one in midair. There are no enemies around that might be able to help, and it's too high up for our helper to self-destruct. Gravity always pulls them down before they can explode. Theoretically, we could self-destruct a flying plasma wisp in midair, but no enemies or pedestals have the plasma ability up to this point in the campaign. With all options exhausted, we make Y press number two. Before leaving this screen, swap out both your own and your partner's abilities for wheel. The next room is difficult to lead the AI through safely, so the removal of the babysitting element is very welcome. To progress in the next room, we must light the fuse on one of the upper cannons, which requires a flame-capable ability, obtainable from one of the Leos in the lower corridors. Doing this with manual player 2 control would be easy, but then we'd still be stuck since a manual player 2 is incapable of actually performing the flame attack. This is another reason we swapped for wheel earlier. You can carefully lead your AI-controlled wheelie into harm's way on your own terms. Now that they're self-destructing, coax them into touching a Leo, and you're golden. Computer-controlled helpers will automatically target fuses, no why necessary. You'll have a break for the next few screens, where even if you lose your helper, all hazards can be cleared with base Kirby. This screen will take some doing, though, featuring a simultaneous battle against Poppy Brothers Sr. and Jukid. But remember, Poppy Brothers bombs are friendly fire capable. Fly to the top of the screen and lure Jukid away from Poppy Brothers. With luck, he'll be in position to take a bomb hit. Once he's down, drop back to guard strats and blow 
blow up Poppy Brother Sr. You'll probably be extremely low on time, but don't worry. If you die, the timer will refill. For the boss fight against Combo Cannon, load up on two yo-yos. This fight will largely be dependent on the performance of Jim's AI. What you really want is for him to jump up and perform a dash attack, which turns him into an immortal hitbox dealing constant damage. No worries if he uses the painful death strat, the prep room ability pedestals mean you get infinite attempts. However, one very important note, do your best to ensure when you finally do beat Combo Cannon, you still have your ability and Jim is still alive. The very next screen features several breakable blocks inside the ground that must be broken to proceed. Some have a Poppy Brothers Jr. below who you can bait into throwing a bomb. Others only feature an enemy Jim below who cannot hit the block. Tricking the Poppy Bro into attacking the block at their feet is also not happening. The bomb throwing angle is just slightly too high and will always hit the ceiling. Your only option is to finick both yourself and your helper in just the right way such that you prevent them from attacking the Poppy Brothers until the golden moment when their attack will accidentally hit the bomb block. If you mess up, you can get the Poppy Brothers to respawn, but remember you're under a time limit and only have a limited supply of HP to go around. If you miss miss your chance to clear this screen in one life, the run is over. With each bomb block destroyed, try to thread the needle through the upcoming onslaught of enemies to the Maxim Tomato for a much needed refresh. All that's left is to pray your helper doesn't get themselves killed in the mini boss battle and the door to safety will open. In this next room, don't take the immediate first door, take the upper path instead. This leads to the secret armory, giving Kirby the plasma ability just before the boss fight against Heavy Lobster. There's a star block wall at the beginning of the chase sequence which you can destroy with an automatic air puff when landing on the nearby ledge. In the actual boss fight, chip damage from the plasma shield will add up and end things quick and easy. Plasma will also come in handy in the next stage. Mash the D-pad at the beginning of each screen and you'll have a handy shield, keeping you safer from harm. You'll be in for an easy time for a while, with the Halberd's reactor requiring no direct attacks by design. The very next screen opens with a bunch of ability pedestals, and sorry, but you'll have to give up plasma to get yourself a gym, equipping Parasol yourself. This auto-scrolling screen features a set of star blocks along the way, which Kirby is incapable of breaking solo. Let the screen scroll a bit, then rush to bonk the upcoming Magical Sweeper forward. Once Jim catches up, they'll attack immediately, and with the Sweeper bonked forward, Jim's yo-yo will accidentally go far enough to hit a block. After a very easy boss battle against the Meta Knights, you'll reach the final boss battle against the one and only Meta Knight himself. This time, unlike Kirby's Adventure, the comment section is correct. Wait around a few seconds and Meta Knight will grow impatient, initiating the battle without you having to swap out for the sword ability. While the ability pedestals in the prep room mean you don't technically have to win this fight first try, your first attempt will be the easiest thanks to Jim's ludicrous damaging potential. With Meta Knight defeated, don't start celebrating just yet. We're forced onto Wheelie Rider and have about 40 seconds to escape the exploding halberd while Meta Knight constantly tries to trip us. And as you might be able to guess, escaping this screen with our standard movement speed is absolutely impossible. You're required to press the Y button at least once to use the wheelie's speedy dash attack, which can continue indefinitely as long as you don't hit an obstacle. If you make your dash and trip too early, that's it, game over. You can't take back that Y press, you've got to go all the way back to the start of the game and try again. Before you've actually made that Y press though, you still have infinite lives. Use them to scout out as far as you can, memorizing the landscape and getting a feel for where you need to make your jumps. With your confidence built, make Y press number three and run for it. Once you inevitably mess up a jump or Meta Knight very rudely bumps into you, continue the rest of your journey at oh my god, oh my god. Write a sticky note saying don't press Y, get it had If you were able to dash fast enough, you'll escape the halberd and officially end the Revenge of Meta Knight Minimum Y Challenge with a final score of three Y presses. Special thanks to some Patreon backers, including Literal Cat, Sylvie Wing Cat Girl is gay and doesn't go to bed on time, Reblog if you too are gay and or don't go to bed on time, Lily Sap, Shadowfire 638. It's been theorized that the baby Dinonychus lived in trees and may have even been able to glide through the air. I didn't get to see Game of Champasan stream Hoshi no Kabi 
Supa Darakusu, so I can't correct anything else you mispronounced. There will come soft rain in the smell of the ground and swallows circling with their shimmering sound. If you're seeing this, then I forgot to change my Patreon name again before the latest video. How embarrassing would that be? Doodles Hack 12. Many sentences within program were of a dangerous length and were performed by trained vocal practitioners. Don't try it home. Jen the pink haired cat on Twitter.com says meow. Trish Chandler, Rob Jackson says there is no Easter Bunny, there is no Tooth Fairy, and there is no Walt Disney Studios. Eagle Wee, Jeff Amadon, Quiet Mistrevis, Darknit, Frequently a Doofus, Occasionally an Idiot, Always a Fool, Brisky, Ian Beck, Landfair, Pawulkami, Galugoguri, Shuwiderun, Jeroba, Willie, and Silio, Go Go Goch, and Kierka. With hell behind us, we move on to the final game, number six out of six. Can you beat Milky Way Wishes without pressing the Y button? Milky Way Wishes functions under a totally unique rule set, which is incredibly convenient for our run. You can't gain abilities by eating enemies, instead you have to find super duper ability pedestals. Once you touch one, that ability will be permanently added to your inventory, and you can transform into it at absolutely any time. That means an infinite supply of helpers, removing practically all potential difficulty from the entire playthrough. And getting our first ability will be exceptionally easy, too. Head into this tiny planet on the map screen, and you'll find the copy ability for free. Thanks to the ability system, we won't be covering most of Milky Way wishes. Trust me, it's easy. There is one small note, though, a block-breaking technique unique to the Milky Way. Notice when swapping abilities, Kirby will demonstrate that ability with an attack automatically. These attack animations can't damage enemies, but for some reason they absolutely can destroy breakable blocks, thus allowing you to throw Yo-Yo's Y button free at absolutely any block you'd like, even underwater. And if you didn't think this run was easy enough, head into Kavios and obtain Hammer. Hammer has a special super powerful dashing hammer throw executed with the A button, normally sacrificing the hammer upon use. But since we can give ourselves any ability in our inventory whenever we want, we can spam hammer throws over and over. With marks drowning under our infinite supply of mallets, the Milky Way Wishes No Why Challenge is mission complete. Special thanks to some Patreon backers, including Awesome Games, Flame Solace, Macaroni Cat personally endorses running away like a little sissy baby, Harry Stoll. Robin with a Y, Autistic Yu-Gi-Oh. Speaking of King Leonidas, he was actually a pretty cool guy. Horrible gambler, though. One of the worst of us all. Haleran, Pokachap, Jinx Shadow, maybe Nodixon, Alora Mora. Random Internet Cat is a random cat on the internet and should not, under any circumstances, be trusted to do non-cat things. Kimberly, the gaming bee, OMG Senpai notice me. And Daybreak, the Auroran Goddess, kindly requests you take that serotonin and inject it into my veins. Please and thanks, woo. If you're a good enough person not to walk out of the theater during the credits, good news! It's time for Kirby Superstar's true final challenge. Game 7 out of 6. Can you beat the arena without the Y button? The arena is a boss rush featuring every boss seen throughout Kirby Superstar, requiring you to defeat them all in a single life while rationing a supply of five Maxim Tomatoes. At the start of the run, you can choose from almost every ability in the game, but after the first fight, you'll only be given two randomly selected pedestals between rounds. Additionally, the boss order is almost entirely random, making planning ahead much more difficult. You can probably guess my recommended loadout. Summon an AI-controlled gym and pick up plasma for yourself. With your abilities chosen, run in to challenge destiny. Number 19, Heart of Nova. Oh, oh, come on! Unfortunately, whenever Heart of Nova shows up, you'll be completely robbed of your helper. This run will have to go on without Jim. As for the actual fight, it should be an easy zero damage. And if you weren't aware, yes, you can shoot without the Y button. The other face buttons work just fine. Number 18, Waddle D. Number 17, Twin Woods. Number 16, Camellio Arm. As long as you're guarding, the only attack to worry about is Camellio's tongue grab attack. They'll only ever do it once on ground level before jumping into the air again, so keep away when you know it's coming in the rotation, then get back in for chip damage. Number 15, Windows. Run directly next to the boss, guard, sit back, and drink a latte. One note, in between sips, you'll need to briefly let go of and repress the guard button. There's some weird quirk to the plasma shield where it will stop dealing damage to windows if you've left it holding too long. I have no idea why, but if you quickly let go and repress, it will deal damage like normal. 
Also, thanks to the shield, even projectiles that normally deal chip damage on guard will usually be destroyed, allowing for an easy zero damage clear. Number 14, Neglected Mini Bosses. Here we fight Chef Kawasaki, Bonkers, and Fred. Chipping the first two will be easy, just watch out for Kawasaki's ladle grab. Fred is more dangerous, being a grab-focused fighter. Be extremely cautious and never leave yourself open to his dashing grab. Remember, taking even a single hit has the potential to make you drop plasma and end the run. Number 13, Mini Boss Brothers. This set features Poppy Brothers Sr., Mr. Frosty, Iron Man, and Jukid. The first three are easy, with only Mr. Frosty's dashing grab capable of breaking your guard. Jukid, however, is the hardest mini boss of them all. Almost every one of his attacks is a grab. Treat him with extreme caution, only going for a couple chip hits at a time when you get the chance. Note that Jukid's hands have their own hitboxes, so you can hit him from a bit farther away than you might expect. With the mini boss gauntlet finished, enter number 12, Dynablade. Since Dynablade's hitbox is in midair and constantly moving around, we'll need to be patient. Wait in the right spot, and just before she makes a landing, jump up to get a hit in. Don't get greedy, she'll attack soon after and may move her head forward in the process. If you memorize the proper positioning, you'll always be safe. Her projectiles can't break through the plasma shield. Number 11, Meta Knight. Absolutely always get yourself to full health with a Maxim Tomato before a battle with Meta Knight. He's one of the hardest battles in this run, with a totally unpredictable attack pattern and multiple attacks capable of breaking your guard. We need to get away from this monster as soon as possible, so abandon caution and give Meta Knight a non-stop hug. With some luck, he'll pause at the edge of the screen for a few seconds, comboing himself for tons of damage. If you're aggressive enough and lucky enough not to drop plasma when you inevitably get hit, Meta Knight's mask will shatter and he'll run away in bashful agony. Number 10, Combo Cannon. Back to back hell, such amazing RNG. Refill to full with another Maxim Tomato because Combo Cannon is a major roadblock. Before the main cannon, focus on destroying the laser cannon. When it's about to fire or an open hand approaches, retreat to the upper left where you'll be safe. Once the energy cannon's gone, you can hug the wall below the main cannon safely. Look for an opportunity between cannonball shots and hand grabs to make a single jump up. A hugging wall jump can hit the cannon safely. This is workable for most of the fight, but once combo cannon is low on health, it'll enter berserk mode, speeding up all attacks. This makes the hands grab exceptionally difficult to dodge, now capable of reaching the bottom bottom left corner of the screen. If you end up losing your ability at this point, don't lose hope. Remember, enemy bombs are fully friendly fire capable. And the RNG luck doesn't end there. The safe room gave me both bombs and parasol. Ah! Number 9, Fatty Whale. Number 8, Cracko. Thanks to unfathomably lucky RNG, the pedestals granted me with plasma once again, thus making this run truly viable. As you can imagine, this makes short work of Krako as well as number seven, Heavy Lobster. Number six, King DDD. DDD is a little bit special thanks to his stun animation. Whenever he takes damage, his current attack will be interrupted, transitioning directly into another attack. The only one to watch out for is the suck attack, which shouldn't be able to hit you as long as you hug DDD real close. Number five, Lolo and Lala. Remember, you can guard through the blocks, but not the Gordos. Just keep away from those for an easy clear. Number four, Wham Bam Rock. There are three attacks to watch for that can break a guard. The grab is difficult to discern from an open palm slam, so if you're not sure, run away anyway. The punch is telegraphed early and obviously, and you can even deal damage after. Finally, the flick comes out quick from either of the screen edges, so always keep yourself centered and prepared to run at a moment's notice. Number three, Halberd's Reactor. Hug the reactor's left side in midair and enjoy your helper's pretty light show. Number two, Wispy Woods. Fun fact, uh, my favorite latte is the black and white mocha. It, it's, it's got like half mocha and half white chocolate mocha. 
And so like it's it's bitter and sweet at the same time. So it's, it's perfect. Number one, Marks. This fight is thankfully nowhere near as hard as I was worried it would be. If you stick to guarding, most attacks aren't any trouble, and Marks offers frequent opportunities to jump up to deal damage. Also, don't try to guard through the ice attack, jump over it instead. While you absolutely can guard it without chip damage, you'll perform a 50 dozen guard combo and lag out, potentially denying you the necessary time to escape his next attack. With 10 ounces of patience and 50,000 light years of RNG, you'll carry plasma all the way to the end and show Marks the true power of static electricity. With all 19 battles conquered, the arena's no why challenge is mission complete. And with the arena completed, we can finally tally our true full game total. Of the six games, we beat Spring Breeze with one Y press, Dynablade with one, Gourmet Race with zero, Great Cave Offensive with zero, Revenge of Meta Knight with three, Milky Way Wishes with zero, and The Arena with zero, resulting in a final score of five Y presses. Hey folks, Wario Fan here. I'm popping in to remind you that my Kirby Superstar Ultra Minimal B Press Challenge is ready for your viewing pleasure over on my channel. Come on down for Kirby and stay for the delightful catalog of videos about Nintendo games. And finally, special thanks to all Patreon backers, including its Caroline, not Carolyn, Jazzy36, Nicole the Gamer Girl and Gamer Girl, Transient Faye, Tourbit, Zach Crowder, Gaming Medic, Queen Kenda, Zeta is Pretty Invalid, Maylabels, and Tilt, Jorel Bell, Jane the Jane, Joshua Bennett, Lonely Agent J, Tash, Wolfric Grayscale, more like Gay Scale, Mind Planet 84, Xavi, and My Name is Luca, and I'm gonna try and complete KH358 Days at level 1 before Game Champ does because it's my favorite one. Let me know how much these videos sucked and how to improve in the comments below. A maximum thank you for watching and get into Wario Fan's house.